message is called The Eyes of the Lord. And whenever you're ready, John. Good morning, doers of the word. Good morning. Good morning. We're coming to you. <coughs> This morning, out there from 14781 Sperry Road, Newberry, Ohio, I'm Pastor Sanders, and uh, you're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That's the Eagle 104.3 in Tampa, Island Cali. The title of the message this morning is The Eyes of the Lord. And even though today that we're living in a great apostasy, uh, <coughs> folks, and the corrupt government may appear to be too big to stand against by a lot of people. Things are moving quickly, and this is our time. God has raised us up, and it's something we need to know that as we go through here, you're going to see that the eyes of the Lord are on all of us continually. They are on all, everyone and everything continually. Not even a sparrow can fall that God doesn't know it. And everything we do that's good, that's in compliance with God's will, we place up crowns in heaven. You know, things that we fail to do are the things that we we do that are wrong. Of course, God makes it very clear in this message, too, that he has a really good memory. So it's something we need to keep in front of us all the time in our daily lives. Uh, no matter where we are, as, as King David says, whether you go to the depths of hell or into heaven, uh, God's eyes are on you. And so... We're going to start off today in uh, Zechariah chapter 4, and verses 1 through 14. Zechariah chapter 4. And the angel talked with me again and waked me up, as a man that is waking out of his sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it. And has seven lamps therein, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and one on the, upon the left side thereof. I answered and spoke to the angel, and talked to me, saying, What are these, my lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. <clears throat> Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, that shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shoutings and cryings, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house, his hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of the small things, for they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel, with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Then answered I, and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What by be these two olive branches which through the golden pipes empty the golden oil out of, the, out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. Then he said, These are my two anointed ones that stand by the Lord for the whole no, here, Zerubbabel was assured by God that uh, he would complete the temple. He was building a temple, but this temple was much smaller than the previous temple. And uh, there, he was getting all kinds of resistance. Everywhere he turned, uh, he was getting resistance. And the opposition kept telling him, you're never going to complete it. You will never complete that temple. Now, here, the Lord is telling him, look. Even though this is a small thing, this temple compared to the original temple, the ramification would eventually that what you start here today with this small temple, the ramification would 
eventually compass the entire world. And that was the message that he was getting through. And again, we always have to keep in perspective that we have in front of us right here, we are very, very limited to the here and now. This is all we have. We have the here and now. Uh, that's the only thing that we can do anything with. Okay? We cannot retrieve five minutes ago. You can't retrieve that. Okay? Uh, and we might not have five minutes from now. This morning, when we were down there, uh, I didn't see, it was Chuck who came in here. I didn't see who it was. He came in behind me. I, and as he went into the men's room, and as he left, he, not this Chuck, a different Chuck. Okay? You know, not all Chucks are the same. <laughs> anyhow, but anyhow, so he, he went to the men's room. I didn't see who it was, and he came out, and, and he said hi, and, and shut up the stairs. And all I saw was his back went up the stairs, so I didn't recognize him. And so I said, to Doug up there, you know, because in case this guy had a bomb, I didn't want to be around him. <laughs> But, but you don't know, and you say, well, why do you think that? Well, we're living in times like when these things are happening right now. Remember what is what's taking place all around the world. Our, our Christian churches are being blown up. So anyhow, uh, you never can tell. You never can tell when, you know, you're going to be breathing your last in this earth. And so we might not have five minutes from now. But you, you, you have this, an absolute total assurance that you can completely trust in this. God is in complete control. Amen. God not only knows the past, the present, and the future, He is literally the past, the present, and the future. Amen. And right. when God tells you, rest assured, don't worry about it, you're going to complete it. You're going to complete it. Okay? Yep. And so, I want to go over to Proverbs chapter 2. And in Proverbs... I'll make that Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Yeah. Now, when I want to start in, in verse 9 of Proverbs 15. Now, the way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Now, you know what? I want to go back and start in verse 1. I really do. Let's go back there. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous word stir up anger. The tongue of the wise youths of knowledge shall write. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are upon every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but, but perseverance therein is a branch in the spirit. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent, in the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise despise knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doth not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof. Shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord, and much more than the hearts of the children of men. A scorner loves not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. A merry heart hath made of the cheerful countenance, but by sorrow the heart of the spirit is broken. And the heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth foolishness. And all the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath continual feast. And going back to verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding evil and good. God's eyes are every place. And if we could just keep that up in front of us and remember that no matter what we do, when we do it, every day and all day, uh, God's eyes are upon us. Now, uh, people are, are more and more concerned about the Antichrist system of government. Now, spying, uh, monitoring, profiling. I was talking about that in this smartphone of mine was becoming a smart aleck again. It was doing some very strange things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
And you know, it made me think of how uh, I was reading an article that one of the things that's going to happen when, uh, if in fact uh, we should get hit with a dirty bomb, and they believe it or not, there's there's plots by the Muslims out there to nail us with dirty bombs. Okay. Yeah. And people are not going to have their smartphones. And these young kids, they won't know what to do without a smartphone. It's like unplugging them. They'll, they'll, they'll stand still in the tracks. They won't know what to do or what to say. It's just so uh, conditioned of getting their information off that little thing in their hand. And yet, they're concerned at the same time, well, the young people aren't. They're Unfortunately, nowadays, most of them just aren't smart enough to be concerned about being uh, monitored and being profiled. Everything uh, that you say, everything that you do over those smartphones, and everywhere you go, there's cameras. Cameras up watching you everywhere you go. You walk into stores, uh, everywhere you go, there's cameras. And yet all of that is being in a, in a database. In those databases, there's a huge one out in Utah, and there's another one in, in uh, Virginia, huge databases, and virtually uh, they are building a profile on you, that, that the idea is if, if all of the information that they have on you, they can put in a little computer and uh, uh, build the robot, and even if you die, you still be there because they're, they're building a, a database, and that's the mindset that the people have. But here's the real concern. You see, it's not so much that they're watching all of us, but God is watching all of them. That's right. God is watching all of us. So they really, really do need to be concerned about what they're doing. Yep. They will account. You see, we might not be able to, to hold this you know, antichrist system accountable, but God said he will, and he is going to. And so... The day will come when they will have no defense. And when they stand before him on that judgment day, everything they've ever done or ever said can be flashed before them. There'll be nothing. Uh, you know, you can't lie to God and get away with it. That's right. That's you right. You say, well, wait. Amen. No, no. God, uh, I, I didn't do that. Boom. You'll see it. Yeah, uh, right there. Okay? Yeah. Another confirmation. Gotcha. Another no, confirmation. Right. And so you'll have no defense. And this is what, what we're reading about here. And so, the world really should be terrified. The entire world should be terrified. Amen. Because God is watching you. As he says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. And I want you to go over to the 34th Psalm. And uh, there's an interesting verse here, verse 20. Uh, that is a messianic reference to the righteousness of Christ. He died before his bones could be broken. It was always the custom in those days. Uh, they would always break the bones of the people first so they would uh, hurry up to their the dying process. But uh, he died first, exactly in this prophecy here. But we start in, in Psalm 34, verse 15. Now the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Now remember that. The eyes of the Lord upon the righteous, and God hears his people. He hears his people when you cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of their trouble. The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. And so, here, as we take a look at that, we see <clears throat> well, Friday, land predators called the, the police on us again, which happens all the time. And when the police came out, uh, Grover was out there. For those of you who know Grover, he's a little bitty preacher, 73 or 74 years old. And uh, uh, 
and never stops talking. Yeah. Yeah. Robert never stops talking. Oh, boy. It is good if you can get him talking to the right people. <laughs> and so he's out there, and uh, somebody called the police on him. He's been out back handing literature uh, through the fence to those. And by the way, we had several people leave again. Uh, yeah. We've been doing real good on Fridays out there recently. But anyhow, so when the police pulled in, uh, Grover was standing on the sidewalk, and they pointed at him. Now, I'm to the back of them, so they normally stay far away from me as they can stay. They just avoid me, except for one guy who likes to stop and talk. Uh, but anyhow, the police pulled in there, and they said, Point at you! Get your blankety blankety up here now. Grover said, I can't come on there, that's their property. He said, do you hear me? I say, get your blankety blankety and over here. And uh, so he goes over, he said, I don't ever want to catch you blankety blankety out there on that property out in the back again. Okay. So uh, when he came over, Grover, they pulled around, there was two cars and they left and Grover come over and said, you know, why did he have to swear at me? Cuss that way, that's what he say. So, Grover told me what he said. And I said, well, Grover, what you need to do is go right over there to the police station because he was disrespectful to you without a cause. Right. And you need to go over there and file a complaint. Mm -hmm. He got real nervous. He didn't want to do this. He was afraid that the police were going to give him a problem. So he goes and he talks to Kenny. Kenny said, why don't you just let the Lord handle it? You know, like, because, you know, I've had so many of these. I said, no. Grover, I said, here's your options. If you go over there and you tell Chief Michael, tell Michael that I sent you, you say, Pastor Sanders sent me over here to report to you that one of your officers was very disrespectful to me, okay? That's right. And and that's why I'm here. And Because if you don't, <coughs> then he's going to come back again, and it'll be somebody else who'll be disrespectful to you. Exactly. It'll be your fault, Grover. You mm -hmm. see? This is what he's telling you here, okay? We, we need to remember God is watching us and he rewards us for doing righteousness. Amen. Remember what it says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and the ears open to their cry. That's right. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Cut off the remembrance from the earth. Now, the righteous Christ and the Lord heareth it. And I said, so go over there and do that. So he did. He went on over and he said, Pastor Sanders told me to come and tell you that these officers and the chief said, well, I know Pastor Sanders very well. He's a good friend, and I'm going to look into this. It won't happen again. All right. You see? Hallelujah. you got to just take your stand. That's so, right. That's it don't always right. happen that way, but, but I've always, one thing I've learned, and you're battling these people, you always have to give the opposition better than you get. That's right. You always have to get them better yep. than you get, right? Yep. Found that right through the scriptures. Amen. And so, if you do that, and you always have to do what you say, I remember one time when uh, I had uh, these two ACLU female lawyers, and some of you might have been there. I think you might have been there, Fred Sandy, when uh, Linda Rocker saw it, when she accused me of uh, of uh, what criminal uh, what was it criminal trespass criminal trespass or no criminal assault and, uh, and 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 criminal trespass. I never got it from here to the road that close to her. That's how far away I was from her. I never even know what they look like until we got to court. Okay? And uh, I was very disappointed when we got to court. But anyhow, uh, uh, what happened is they accused me of these things, of all of these false things. But I went and I took them to court and I went after them. And I, and I hit them hard. And I hit them hard on the radio. And Amen. you know what the judge did in that courtroom? He looked at that. He, first of all, that judge could count. A strange thing happened there that day. And that was, when I showed up, I didn't, I didn't even know any lawyers for life. But when I got to that courtroom, God, hand was on it. There were four lawyers for life there. Right. And they said, we're here to represent you. I said, I don't even know you. They said, well, we know all about what you do. And you do, you're good at what you do, we're good at what we do, so we're here to represent you. Now in those days it was different, folks, because that was in the early days of the battle. I used to go into the abortion mills and 
preach of heaven sweet and hell hot, they would clear the whole place out. <laughs> they would go right out yeah. there. And then when they would call the police on I me, mean, by the time the police got there, I'd be gone. They didn't know who I was. I was like the phantom. <laughs> uh, but pretty soon they'd have my picture up. And, uh, in fact, somebody even put it with Joe Scheidler's hat on my head. Okay. But anyhow, so uh, what happened, they were there to represent me, which they did a very good job. Not only were they there, check this out, the ACLU from Akron was there. Oh, wow. And uh, they said, we've come to, uh, to, to represent you and put an amicus brief on your behalf. Huh. And I said, why? They said, well, it's not because of your pro-life, it's because uh, that group there in Cleveland, this branch here in Cleveland, they're all women and they're all anti-male. And uh, uh, we are, we don't like it, we're tired of them. And so, we, I said, well, I don't, I don't really like your help. They said, it doesn't matter. You, you got it. So, anyhow, the judge could count. He looks over here on this side, the ACLU, Cleveland, over here. Lawyers for Life in the ACLU. So, he takes the folder, he looks in it, and he actually took it and he threw it. <laughs> he threw it. <laughs> and then he pointed and he said, don't you ever bring a, fivil, a frivolous case against me again. And those two said, oh well, we tried, you know. It was like that. I mean, they lied through their teeth. But see, that doesn't matter. They, they, they seem to be, that's all they do nowadays in the courtrooms is lie, uh, these lawyers. But anyhow, remember the, the righteous prize in the Lord here. Okay? And uh, I want you to go over to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, we want to read uh, verses 8 through 13. Genesis 6, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And by the way, this is the very first mention of grace in the Bible. And uh, the, the, the very first mention of grace in the New Testament was in Luke 1.30 uh, when he talked about when the angel said to Mary, God is... Uh, you have found favor with God. That word favor and grace are one of the same. It means the same. And that's what he's saying here. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. He was a just man and perfect in the generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. And the earth was corrupt before God, like it is today, and filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh, and corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, here is something that we really need to understand here, is that God is omnipotent. He's the same today, tomorrow, forever. He always does what he said he would do. <coughs> Most of your theologians believe that the population of the earth on that day was somewhere around 8 billion people. And I don't know, we're getting close to that. Exactly how many do we have today? I haven't counted. Well, it, it increases every <coughs> second, so. Yeah. Okay. But anyhow, we're getting close to that today. Do you understand? <coughs> God is the same today, tomorrow, forever. 7.3 plus. 7.3 plus billion. Okay. And so a lot of people say, well, that's, that's kind of confusing. You mean back in those days? Yeah, well, listen, uh, people lived a whole lot longer. Women were having babies uh, for a much longer period of time. Right. And uh, in fact, you know, Eve was probably producing children for a couple hundred years. Mm -hmm. And so, so the earth, they populated the earth very quickly in those days. But God, remember, both man and beast, God said he would destroy all of those. Not He didn't say he was going to destroy the earth, but he would destroy them all off the earth. And God did it because God has the power to do whatever it is he wants to do. And again, you have a mindset today of people. There's a mindset today, especially in America out there, that God kind of has to go along with the public opinion polls for you. I mean, they're just a mindset of these people. It's an amazing thing. Uh, and you know, one of the things to show you just how, how pitiful it is, they recently asked some of these college girls, 
begin, should Hillary have Karl Marx run as her vice president? <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. And uh, these college girls said, yeah, that, that would be a good choice. Now, and you've got and you've got Bernie Sanders out there, folks. When the young kids are going after Bernie oh, yeah. Sanders, I mean, I mean, they're really why? He's telling them he's going to give them all free college. Well, at least he's not saying he's giving them a free education. He's saying he's giving them free college, which is an indoctrination. But when these young, when I talk to these young people, I'm going to tell them, you folks are you're settling for too cheap. You know, look, you're going to need a place to live, too. You don't want to live on that campus because what if uh, they don't have a uh, one of those jacuzzi? Uh, well, no, they have areas where safe speak, where, they, where some of them don't have areas where you could go and not hear anything you don't want to hear. That's what they have on these colleges now. Right, they're what they call... Uh, Free speech zones. No, it's called safe speech zones, where you, you can be... Not free speech, safe speech. It's just the opposite of free speech. Free speech means you can, right. people have a right to say what they want. These means no one has the right to say anything that somebody else doesn't want to hear. So if they don't have one of those, then you know Bernie should be able to also provide these college kids with, with a free house. Yeah. And how in the world are you going to get to school without a car, right? right. Exactly. I mean, he should be, should be able to know. If some of these college kids might wonder, how are you going to pay for this? No problem. Just print money. Right? You can't say, well, they can't do that. They do it all the time. They've been doing it, right? So so we just tell them, you know, you need to, to go out, go for the whole bowl of wax, and while you're printing money, print a little extra so they have some pocket cash, right? But you see, now that may sound completely ridiculous to you folks. To them, it wouldn't. You know? I mean, that's where we're at in this country today. And so, when we've come to this point, we've come to the point, too, where they're using technology and science to where they, they want to use splice human genes with those of pigs and different animals and grow organs uh, in animals to place in humans. They're messing, you remember, when God gave us first divine institution of human law. He kept man for himself. The, the third point in there was to preserve the image of God. God kept the dominion of man. And they're saying, no, uh, we're going to take men, we're going to take their genes, we're going to make, and make beasts, some kind of animals. They're working on that. And now, they've got the technology. Remember, why did God destroy the, ta the Tower of Babel? He destroyed it because their wickedness had become so great exactly. that there'd be no end to what they could do. America's at that point today. Yep. Be We're that at that, that point way. today. Okay. So turn over in your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Now, I want to read you verses uh, starting with verse 12. A land, that's Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 12. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. And it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently to my... Now listen carefully to this and think about our children while, while you're thinking of this. To my commandments which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in due season, the first rain and the later rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. Then I will send grass in the fields for thy cattle, and thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, and there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, unless you perish quickly from off the good land, which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall you lay up these things, 
these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be frontals as between your eyes. And you shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by that way, when thou liest down, and when thou raisest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon the gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your families, to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Well, I had a woman who was very close to me say to me, well, you know, I'm going to let my children decide which way to go, if they want to believe in God, uh, or if they want to believe in whichever way to go, <coughs> whether it's Buddha, whether whatever it is. And you see, this woman uh, is, 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 is simple-minded. She's very simple-minded. You see, but see, this is the mindset of the world out there. This is the things that she was parroting, things that the world is into. And uh, she says, don't, you know, don't judge me, meaning her Christianity. And today, you know, if you, when you witness, especially talk to the young people, you'll immediately be, be charged, accused of beating them over the head with a Bible. You'll immediately be accused of beating them over the head with a Bible. Well, that's all right. Right? Yep. I'd rather beat them over the head with a Bible or to watch the rest of them end up in hell. Right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And, and that's what we need to do. You see, we need to be more fervent, much more fervent today, especially. And you just got to tell the young folks flat out, and, and I mean you got to be very, uh, very forceful nowadays. The opposition is. Yep. <laughs> and uh, and yep. so, and when they're lying, you got to tell them. Stop that lying right now. You yep. just stop your lying right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so here, the ways of the world is total disobedience to our Creator. And, uh, and they're, they're a one-way ticket to the lake of fire. And as what the Lord is telling you here, we must continuously, continuously, continuously be teaching the children. They need to hear it in the morning when they wake up. They need to hear it at night when they go to bed. Amen. Remember, America was was started as one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. That's right. And let's show Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, and, and what they're doing now today, the liberals in this land, virtually their mindset is, let's show Sodom and Gomorrah just how we can be sinful. Let's show them just how we can deserve God's wrath. That is the mindset from you're getting from Hollywood. Everywhere you yep. turn, that's the mindset. And so, we need to be more aggressive yep. with righteousness than they are with unrighteousness. And if you turn over to 1 Kings chapter... Well, I want to start with 1 Kings chapter 14 with just a couple of verses. Verses 21 through 24. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, in the city which the Lord did choose out of the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nahamah, and Ammonites, Ammonites. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they commanded above all their fathers had done. They also built them high places and images and groves in every hill and under every green tree. Well, that's that's where they sacrificed their children in the darkness and the shadows. And there were also Sodomites in the land. Amen. And they did according to all the abominations to the to the nations which the Lord cast up before the children of Israel. Well, you'll find out that. Those people, those kings that cast the Sodomites out of the land, God bless them. Amen. And see, you need to say that today. Yep. And you need to be bold, and you need to use the terminology. The Lord is Lord is lines. Yes. And I was sitting, uh, talking. We had uh, some of the women from the Tea Party, and when Denver and I mentioned Sodomites, Amen. Uh, one woman says, "Oh, please." In other words, that was what they're supposed to do. Remember the way that they 
One of, one of the tactics of the opposition today is they're always going to be offended. You offended them, therefore you're supposed to act west. And, uh, but guess what? We didn't acquiesce. We said, what's wrong with you? I am surprised that you are so biblically illiterate. Don't you know what that word means? It's a word <laughs> about homosexuality, as you would know. It's very offensive to God. It's a very offensive sin to God. Amen. Yeah, it's real. Well, well, I'm going to tell you, that she wasn't expecting that. Didn't know how to react to that. Right. That just took all, all the air out of her. And you yeah. see, you folks have to be able to use. This is why That's right. terminology is so important. You know, uh, you're, you're bombarded by the lamestream media telling you there's certain words you can't say. Uh, political correctness. And if, if you adhere to that, you deserve what happens to you. You need to stand up and you say, no. There's nothing about political correctness that God's word, the Bible, does not call a sin. That's right. It is unclean. Amen. And I don't want to touch it. Amen. It's a, it's a very vile thing. Amen. And, uh, I like to do the, to see the look on their faces when I do that. Yeah. But anyhow, here when we read this in 1 Kings chapter 15, and uh, first I want to go here to, yeah, 15, starting in verse 1. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, son of Nabeth, reigned Abiyam over Judah. And three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Ma'akah, the daughter of Abishalom. Now, that woman who was involved uh, with I, idolatry. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and the heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of David his father. But now listen to this next verse. Hmm. Pay close attention. I'll bet everybody in here has some kind of a family or relative, right? Did yeah. you care something for? Somebody that's unsaved. Would you care something for them? Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem and set his son up after him to establish Jerusalem? Because David did which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from the thing which he commanded him in all the days of his life, only in the matter of Uri the Hittite. Wow. Well, yet, you see, God looked upon the heart of people. And David literally com committed murder. He murdered Uri the Hittite. And yet God forgave him. You see, God had the right to do that because both Uri and David belonged to God. Amen? Right. Amen. But David David was a man who's, who God said he was after his own heart. And you understand if we live in the same way, if we are, if we live a, a life in which God has repealed people, that it's after God's own heart too. Our family, you know, an unsaved person can be sanctified. And he tells you in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that, you know, you can be living with an unsaved person, but your witness can be something that, that brings them or at least gives them protection long enough for them to hear the gospel of their salvation. Amen? Amen. And so, and there was a war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Well, that's because he was disobedient to God. And you know, war is no fun. It can be really be tiring, folks. Now, the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. And Abijam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. Now, look at these next verses here. And in the twentieth year of Jeroboam, the king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. And forty and one years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Micaiah, the daughter of Ishbalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all of the idols that his fathers had made. Amen. And so here now you see, and also Maacah, his mother, even her he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove and Asa destroyed her idol and burned it. Now see, Asa was the man who was walking 
And he was a good man, but he wasn't perfect by far. And he made some some mistakes. And all of us can do that. But God allows us to remember. Uh, as he did with David. And all of us, uh, there's not one perfect person in here, folks. And, you know, we keep telling people uh, there are some folks that, that, that find absolute problems with everybody that's running for office for candidates out there. Uh, there's not one perfect candidate. We're not going to have a perfect candidate. You're not going to get a perfect candidate. Okay? He will come back at the end of the tribulation period. But the last time he was here was thousand years ago. The, other than that, you will not find a perfect candidate. And so what you have to do is find one that walks the closest with the Lord and rem, and let him know that not only you, but God is watching. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I can tell you this, look, just like folks here, do you know what, what she said? Do you know what the others said? He said, Pastor, we know and if we get elected and we don't do what we're promising, we're going to have to deal with you. And I said, that's right. That's absolutely right. You see, if I'm going to get out there and work for you, and you're not going to do like you said, you're not going to come through on your promises like you said, then you're going to deal with me. Amen? Amen. But I'm a lot easier to deal with than the Lord. Amen? Thank you. I want to turn over here now to Amos. In Amos chapter 9. Well, actually, I want to start with chapter 8. We'll just read one verse, verse 7. In Amos chapter 8, verse 7. And the Lord has sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their words. I will never forget. You see, God will never forget, you know, our good works or our bad works. That's right. And then if I go to verse 11. And the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor thirst for water or for the hearing of the words, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. Do you remember that for almost 2,000, just shy of 2,000 years, Israel lay barren and there was no word of the Lord being spoken in Israel. But first of all, here he's talking about two things. You've got in these passages in view going back to AD 70 but also uh, to the coming tribulation period right. and they shall wander from sea to sea from the north even to the east and they shall run to and fro and seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it and that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst that thirst is for the word of God Amen. well I got to tell you today our universities were all started, and the hospitals were all started. The universities were started for the express purpose of teaching God's Word, the Bible, Harvard, Yale, all of these. That's why they were started. Today, uh, you'll be charged with a hate crime if you even, you know, use the Word of God at those campuses. Yeah, well, unless you're right, unless you're cursed. And then... In, in, uh, starting in verse 5 of chapter 9. And the Lord God of hosts is he that touches the land, and he shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn, and it shall rise up holy like a flood, and shall be drowned at by the flood of Egypt. It is he that buildeth the stores in the heaven, and hath founded his trip. Now listen, he's telling you something, that he is the one God is the one that created the earth and and he is the one that populated the earth and he can easily very easily uncreated and unpopulated at the same time i'm going to close here then pick it up on me afterwards you've been listening to us here from doers of the word baptist church at 14781 sperry road in newberry ohio and our zip code would you like to write it's 44065 you're listening to us this morning and the Liberty Works Radio Network, that is the Eagle 104.3 in Tampa and Ocala. And until next week, uh, we want to say good morning, God bless, and remember always, always, keep, keep fighting, fighting the fight. Okay, going back to where I left off here. <coughs> He's telling them that he, he made the earth, and uh, 
He populated the earth. He can unpopulate it anytime he wants us. He's already done in the past. And he goes on to say, he said, calls the waters of the sea and poureth them upon the face of the earth. And the, the Lord is his name. You are not as the children of Ethiopia, of Ethiopians unto me. O children, Israel saith the Lord, have I not brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaphtor and the Syrians from Kerr? Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all the nations, like corn is sifted in a sieve. You shall not yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. And all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Well, as you know, Israel's had a pretty rough past. Uh, yeah. God demands, he demands obedience. Now I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 22. Just, I want to read for three verses here. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. But folks, uh, now this this is not does not mean that this is going to be in every single case. But this is in general. That's exactly what will happen. A lot of times, uh, people raise their children up, then they go off to the public school system. They go far away. But if you if you have ingrained the word of God into them, it'll come back. If you love your kids, keep them out of that public school system. Keep them as far away from the world as you can. Amen. Uh, that, that reminds me. Here, you want to know a good reason to keep them out of the public school system? <coughs> California high, high school students taught sex toys and porn by Planned Parenthood. Oh, no. There you go. That's just one of the schools where, you know, one of the courses is learning how to fornicate. Oh. And that's in the public school system out there today. Also, they're teaching Islam, this communist core that they have. And by the way, the governor of Ohio is for it. Sure. Jeff Bush is for it. Mm -hmm. uh, this common core is, is an assault it's, uh, on children. It's an abuse. It's a wicked, evil, ungodly, unclean thing. Right. So if you love your children, do as it says here. Train up a child in the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. And then, uh, as we go over to verse 12, he that loveth pureness of the no. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. And then, in verse 15, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. You know, they're telling you today, I, I just got a re report of a, some people that, that one of the kids had gone to school and had got a bruise, and uh, in the case, they asked, where did that bruise come from? And she said, well, my dad gave me a, um, gave me a whipping on my backside. Right away, they wanted to charge him. They wanted that young girl to file a complaint mm. against her father. The idea, the whole... Uh, Antichrist, you know, so-called education indoctrination system is geared towards destroying families. Mm -hmm. And so, I want you to go over to Second Chronicles chapter 14. And in Second Chronicles chapter 14, uh, starting with verses 1 through 8, now we had read a little bit about Asa before. So Abijah slept with his fathers, verse 1, 1 through 8. And they buried him in the city of David. Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days, the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He took away the altars of the strange gods in the high places break down the images and cut down the groves. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord God for their fathers and to do the law and the commandments. Also they took away all of the cities of Judah, high places and the images, and the kingdoms were quiet before him. And he built fenced cities in Judah and the land, 
had rest. And he had no war in those years because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities, make about them walls, towers, and gates, and bars. And while the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God, and we have sought him, and he had given us rest on every side. So they built, and they prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bear uh, targets and spears out of Judah, 300,000, and out of Benjamin, that bear shields and drew bows, 200 and fourscore thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. You see, uh, by obeying God and being obedient to God, they were at peace, not at war. And then I want to finish in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 7 through 10. Now Asa, like the rest of us, now and then he messed up, and it cost him, you see. You would have thought he'd have listened, but listen to what happens here. And at that time, Hananiah, the seer, well, he was a man of God, he was a prophet of God, and came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand. Mm. You see, Asa, as long as he was obeying God, he was blessed in every which way. Right. Uh, were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host? And many chariots and horsemen, yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. This is what we have to remember continuously, right? Mm -hmm. To show himself strong in the behalf of those whose hearts is perfect toward him. Here and thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Folks, war is not a pleasant thing. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're fighting in one, it's, it's a whole lot different than watching, watching one on television, than when you're out there actually in it. You know, it's, it's not a lot of fun when you have your arms and legs blown off, right? It's, it's, war is not a good thing. And I can tell you what will get you in war. Disobedience to God and weakness. Disobedience to God and weakness. Then Asa was wroth with a seer and put him in a prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. But you see, Asa should have left, should not have touched God's anointed, uh, because uh, what that caused Asa to do was die. God took him home before he could get into any more trouble. Amen? Amen. Amen. And with that, that's the end of that message. Very good. Very good. All right, and with that, we will take the... Pardon? Ooh! Uh, you want to do the offering first? Okay. Let me see. I'm going to have.